Hi everyone, today's topic is how to diagnose appendicitis on CT. As you all know, appendicitis is a common condition occurring most commonly between the ages of 10 to 30 and is a common cause for central abdominal pain and in later stages localizes to the right iliac fossa. Appendicitis is an easy diagnosis in most instances, however, it can be tricky in certain patients to diagnose the appendix Firstly, because it's difficult to reliably identify the location of the appendix. And secondly, to evaluate for complications of appendicitis. I'm going to give you four steps um, to um, prepare you with the tools required to confidently make the diagnosis of appendicitis uh, in your patients that you may see in your day-to-day -day practice. So step one, it's simple, but it's not always easy to find the cecum. Sometimes the cecum can migrate from the right lower quadrant, can be seen in the left lower quadrant, can also be seen in the right upper quadrant. Um, this is called a mobile cecum. So step one is to fi find the cecum. Step two is to locate the inferior pole of the cecum. Because the cecum is sometimes a mobile structure, uh, it can point in many different directions. And um, I'm going to give you some tips to identify the lower pole of the cecum. And that's where the appendix arises from. And so if you identify the inferior pole of the cecum, and if you closely interrogate that region, in most instances, you're able to find the appendix. Step three, of course, when you find the appendix, we then proceed on to evaluate the appendix to see if there's any inflammation, any signs of um, acute inflammation and to make the diagnosis of acute appendicitis. Step four is once you make the diagnosis of appendicitis, we then take a step further and identify any complications of appendicitis. Most commonly includes perforation or um, uh, in intra-abdominal abscess as a complication of acute appendicitis. So let's get started. I'd like to, I'd like to take you through some cases where it's easy to find the appendix um, and then we'll go on to harder cases. So this is a patient, 81-year-old um, female, um, presenting to ED for other reasons. Um, so we'll use this as a good example to find the appendix. So step one, locate the cecum. So we're looking at the right lower quadrant here. Try to find the cecum. Step two is to find the inferior pole of the cecum. So a handy tip is to find the ileocecal valve. There are many ways that you can do this. Um, you can trace the terminal ileum and then see where it attach, um, enters the cecum. Um, a handy tip to find the ileocecal valve is to look for any fat density that's normally present adjacent to the ileocecal valve, which we can see here. Once we find the ileocecal valve, we then know where the inferior pole of the cecum is, which is in this instance right here. Then we look closely in this region to look for a blind ending tubular structure, which would represent the appendix. So we can see this worm-like structure here, and we can see it extends from the inferior pole of the cecum here, it goes up here and ends here. So we can see the appendix in this instance is normal. And we can see it clearly defined because of the abundance of intra-abdominal adipose tissue in this patient. The appendix is not dilated, so it measures about five millimeters. Upper limits of normal is six millimeters. There is preservation of the periappendiceal fat with no evidence of stranding, and there is no periappendiceal fluid to suggest the presence of an abscess. There is gas within the appendix, which is a useful sign to um, discount the presence of acute appendicitis and we're looking for high density within the lumen of the appendix to suggest the presence of appendicular which um, in this case there is none so we'll go on to the next case all right this is a different patient step one is to find the cecum so we're gonna go look in the right lower quadrant and we immediately see the cecum. 
then we find the inferior pole of the second. To do that, we're identifying the ileocecal valve, which is this structure right here. You can all, again, see the fat surrounding the ileocecal valve. As we come down, we see this blind ending tubular structure, which is the appendix. Again, it's normal in this patient. This is another patient. So we start by looking at the right lower quadrant for the cecum, which we can see right here. We're going to find the ileocecal valve, which is right here. And you can see the fats around the ileocecal valve right here. Now we're identifying this structure here, looking for the appendix. Now we can see the appendix just coming off here, coursing in the midline into the pelvis. And it's quite long in this patient. It contains gas, which um, as you recall, is a good sign that there is no evidence of appendicitis. And this is a normal appendix. So now that we've seen some easy cases to find the appendix, we'll go on to a patient where it's a little bit harder to find the appendix, but with these, with the steps I uh, alluded to before, um, it's quite doable. So we're looking at the right lower quadrant to look for the cecum, which is this structure right here. We're going to find the ileocecal valve. It's a little bit difficult in this patient. We can look on other planes if we require. So another plane that I like to look at is the coronal plane. So you can see the ileocecal valve right here, surrounded by that fat. Now that we found it, we're going to look for the look closely at the inferior pole of the cecum to look for the appendix. Now, as you can see here, there is a tubular structure arising from the inferior pole of the cecum. That is the appendix. And again, it looks normal in calibre with no periapendicil stranding. Okay, new case. Step one, look for the cecum, looking at the right lower quadrant. Look for the ileocecal valve right here. And then a blind ending tubular structure arising from the cecum, which looks like this structure, but let's look at it more closely. Yep, so we're quite confident that this arises from this inferior pole of the cecum and it's normal in this patient. Some of you might have seen some um, dilatation and some stranding, and then this patient actually had a renal ureteric calculus, which has resulted in obstruction of the collecting system and re resulting in fornicil rupture. Okay. This is a case where the cecum is not in the normal position. So if we look at the right lower quadrant here, we can't see any colon. Um, as you recall in other cases, the cecum was in this region. In this patient, the cecum is all the way up here in the right upper quadrant where you'd expect the hepatic flexure to be. So if you were to go look in here, you'd be looking at all these loops um, and it's easy to mistake in a small bowel loop for the appendix. If you're not sure, always go to the coronal. So you can see the transverse colon, you follow it down, you see the ascending colon, looking for the ileocecal valve, which is this structure again. It's got the fat surrounding the ileocecal valve. Then we look at the inferior pole of the cecum here, and we can clearly see the appendix arising from the inferior pole of the cecum and this appendix is normal.
This is another case. So right lower quadrant identifies a cecum, which is this structure right here. We're going to look for the ileocecal valve. In this case, the patient's got a bowel obstruction, so everything is dilated. But you can see this loop of small bowel entering into the colon. This is the ileocecal junction. Now, if we window it well, now that we know where the ileocecal junction is, we can identify this, we can interrogate this inferior pole to look for the appendix, and we can see it jumping into view here. This blind ending tubular structure is the appendix. You might note that there is a high density ovoid structure at the proximal aspect of the appendix. This is called an appendiculus. It's quite common to find this, and in 90% of these patients, they eventually go on to have acute appendicitis. So it's useful to make a note of this uh, if you do find it. This patient um, does not have acute appendicitis, but they've got a bowel obstruction. So I'd like to show you a case of acute appendicitis. Again, right lower quadrant, find the cecum, ileocecal valve, fat next to the ileocecal valve, Looking at the inferior pole of the cecum, we can see a structure coming off the inferior pole that's blind ending and tubular in shape. Now, this structure is, it looks unhappy. The walls are thickened. There is enhancing mucosa. It's dilated up to 1.1 centimeters, where the normal limit is six millimeters. And all the fat surrounding the appendix is inflamed. You can see all the stranding. So this is consistent with acute appendicitis. To take this further, we're looking for complications. Complications include perforation and abscess. So we're looking closely here for any well-marginated fluid collections, which would suggest the presence of an abscess, which we don't see. Now we change it to lung windows. We can look closely at this region to look for evidence of perforation. So you can see, a small gas locule is contained within the appendix, but there's no gas locule outside the appendix. It's important to check up in the top of the abdomen, anterior to the liver, in the most antidependent portion of the patient while the patient is lying on the CT scan, because this is where gas accumulates. And in this patient, there is no free gas. So this is a case of acute uncomplicated appendicitis. This is a case of acute appendicitis with complications. So we're looking at the right lower quadrant, we found the cecum, found the ileocecal valve, looking closely at the inferior pole of the cecum, we can see a structure coming off the inferior pole, that's the appendix. It's acutely inflamed, dilated, periappendiceal stranding, and we can see this structure here right next to the tip of the appendix, if we put on the lung window, so we can clearly see that's gas. That is not contained within any bowel. Almost looks like there is gas connecting the intraluminal appendiceal gas with this extraluminal gas collection. Right next to it, there's a small fluid density collection right here. That's a fluid collection with gas. So this is a um, perforated acute appendicitis with contained abscess and contained gas, so contained perforation. Um, this will require surgical management for washout and appendectomy. So I'd like to show you now a mimic of acute appendicitis. This patient presents with right lower quadrant pain. So we're looking at the right lower quadrant, looking at for the cecum, which is here, ileocecal valve coming inferiorly. We can see blind ending tubular structure coursing off it, which is the appendix, it's normal. 
but you can also see the structure here. There is stranding, there is fat, and there's high density within this structure. Now, because we've identified the appendix separate to this lesion, it's not in the inferior pole, and it's on the anti-mesenteric border of the colon, this is an entity known as epiplogic appendagitis. It does present in the same with the same clinical syndrome as acute appendicitis, where there is right lower quadrant pain. But it's important to make the distinction because this is managed with pain relief and it's a self-resolving entity versus acute appendicitis, which is a surgical, um, which requires surgical management. This is a case from Radiopedia. Okay, this patient also presents with right lower quadrant pain. Now, step one, finding the cecum, found the elliptical valve. Look at it closely, try to find the appendix. Now we can see the structure coming off here. That's the appendix, that's normal. We can see that there is stranding in this region here, and we've got some ill-defined trace-free fluid adjacent to this. This is round, and it looks like a diverticulum because that's exactly what it is. This is a inflamed diverticulum, which is consistent with acute appendicitis. Uh, sorry, acute diverticulitis. Normally, you get diverticulitis in the sigmoid colon, but in certain cohorts, such as in Asian patients they get ascending colon diverticulitis, which is a mimicker of appendicitis. Now, the last case I'd like to show you is also another mimicker of acute appendicitis. Actually, no, sorry. This is a case of an appendicitis. So as you recall before, the high density ovoid structure in the appendix, this is a larger one. It's important to note that um, there is coexisting acute appendicitis because the appendix is inflamed and there is some surrounding periappendicial fat. So this is acute appendicitis secondary to an appendicle. Looking for complications, so there is no perforation and there is no abscess. That's all the cases I have for you today. I hope that this video has been educational and uh, hopefully given you more confidence in how to diagnose appendicitis on CT. Thank you for watching.